Welcome back. So over the weekend, I spent uh, quite a bit of time um, figuring out the air conditioning system for the aircraft. So I had to model up this unit, and, and I've decided what we're going to do is go with this uh, vintage air system because they have a fully um, sort of contained unit that you know for hot rods. And basically, I've modeled it up here. So this is the unit itself it has heating uh, and cooling, and a fan, blower fan, and has outlets for defrosting and also for regular cooling vents and also um, for air down at your feet. Um, so anyway, I found a place where it will fit behind the dash without sort of disturbing anything else, but obviously I need to make some more brackets and stuff for that. Um, but it will fit there, so that's good. And so the next thing to do is figure out uh, how we're gonna run the various uh, lines for the vents. So you see I've modeled up these vents and put them in there, and these are the ones, um, or one of the ones that factory air, uh, sorry, vintage air um, provides. And uh, so I got left and right there for pilot and co-pilot. And those are ones that you know can open up and then you can angle them and twist them and that sort of stuff. And then I've got two for the back seat. Um, fortunately, not enough room for three there, but that should be fine, uh, at least uh, for the prototype until we figure something else um, better. So anyway, uh, that's mostly done. And as you see, I've got one of the um, tubes in there just roughly thrown in there. I haven't even tried to orient it anywhere. It's just going through everything right now, but that's what happens when you first uh, lay a route out there uh, for something and then you've got to um, align it where it needs to be so I'll be working on that a little bit more probably over next weekend because I've got a lot of stuff to do this week still and so back in the shop if you saw the last video we decided we were going to make um, remake the seat mounts and lift the seats up another couple of inches um, so the guys really quickly threw together this uh, platform and away we go and by the end of the day on um, Monday, the platform had been made and milled and actually glassed. So that's, I think, a personal record for us, <laughs> getting everything done uh, in one day. So uh, next up on that thing is once the glass is cured for Tuesday, uh, we were putting some putty on it. And this is now Tuesday, so basically running. So this is um, prior to lunchtime on Tuesday, it was already had the putty on it and uh, moving along. And the guys started laying up the mold for this one. This is the brace that uh, goes around the parachute and uh, helps support the um, engine mount uh, with respect to the firewall. So that was the one that we had to redo as well to fit the new parachute. So that one's uh, underway. And I've been cutting out some more parts. There's some for the aileron controls here. There's a bracket for the uh, nose gear tow bar. And this is the bracket here that's going to hold the um, landing and taxi lights. It needs to be welded up. So those are coming along. And this afternoon I was over at the dyno shop uh, with Ed and he was uh, getting the engine sort of dialed in a little further um, in preparation for Drake showing up, who's actually now going to be showing up on the 19th, this is when he's scheduled, um, 19th of October. So we've got to wait a little while, but that you know gives them time to uh, get this new tune sorted out. And I'll explain that a little bit more in a minute, but you see en uh, Ed's got the engine running here. He's put a bunch of new sensors on there that um, send information directly into the MoTeC ECU and ultimately can be displayed on the screen. So we get things like boost pressure and and uh, you know engine um, coolant temperature and that sort of stuff. And obviously it all gets displayed here um, on the laptop. And you'll see in a minute we're going to be displaying it on a little tablet uh, on the aircraft, which is um, kind of neat. And Ed had some time to explain to me, you know, exactly what's sort of going on with this new tune. And so, you know, the history behind Motec and diesels is this is their first kind of foray into doing diesel tuning. And obviously they've got, you know, a lot of experience doing regular uh, gasoline engine tuning. Um, anyway, so what's going on with this, um, with the problem that they're having with this tune is the way that they do it for the fuel delivery. When you ask it for a certain amount of fuel, and like if you bip, blip the throttle and then just hold it there, um, the fuel delivery program doesn't actually deliver exactly what you want right away. It kind of delivers um, less and then more and less, and it's sort of in a sine wave that slowly approaches where you want to be. So it's not as accurate as it needs to be. And they're you know rewriting that. The guys at Motec in Australia are rewriting that um, to smooth it out. And they've already been testing it. And because of the way they're working with it, um, they actually have to delete. They had to develop a new little piece of hardware that controls um, the injectors I guess and so they've, uh, they've actually developed that um, and it's not something we're going to have to wait on that long and I have a feeling that by the time um, Drake shows up uh, on the 19th they're going to have most of this dialed in and uh, we may be able to run this new tune but even even right now um, you know Ed 
has managed to uh, you know set the parameters and stuff so we can bring the engine up to higher RPMs now and head it up as much as 3,000 RPM and put a little bit of load on it uh, with the dyno there on with the water break and the most I saw on there was putting out about 100 pounds of uh, torque and not a lot of horsepower because we weren't revving it very high. Um, it's kind of neat though because on the ECU um, programming there we can set the maximum RPM of the engine which we're going to do and that's going to be set to 3800 RPM and that'll protect the engine and uh, so you won't be able to over rev, over rev the engine and or you know the prop and, and make the prop you know go too loud and noisy or whatever and uh, the guys at MT have asked us you know to not take the prop over 20 um, what is it 2700 RPM so here's that map if you look at that one in the middle there with the red and blue you can see where the throttles being blipped it goes up higher than the line there and then it slowly sort of comes back down and matches up. This is the problem that they're trying to fix. It's, um, it's trying to be those two lines need to stay, you know, in an ideal world, they'll be perfect. So when you bring the throttle up, the de full fuel delivery is exactly on the same spot. Um, anyway, so things are coming along with that and I'm pretty happy with how it's coming out so far. And they made, uh, we had made really good progress um, today. And like I said, we got 100 pounds of torque there um, at a, I think it was less about 2800 RPM and not very um, much boost and stuff on the engine just yet and, and you'll see in a second uh, went inside the engine um, room there just to see what kind of boost the engine was producing and the first turbo uh, I think it was about 2800 RPM the first turbo was putting out um, 4 PSI right now so not very much and the second one was um, at 7 um, PSI so with those um, two numbers we're getting about a hundred uh, foot-pound of torque and uh, so it's the thing sort of looks like they're on track so once we start dialing up the load on the engine and bring the RPM up a little bit more we should see the numbers that I'm hoping to see um, but again until we do it's it's still you know a bit of a, a question mark and it won't be until uh, Drake shows up that we'll see that. So if you look here, you should be able to see the first gauge that's putting out 4 PSI and the second gauge there is putting out about 7 PSI. And lastly, I wanted to test this um, Samsung Windows tablet that I bought a little while back that we're going to be using. So here you can see it's actually running the software on there and it's hooked up via the Ethernet and it's showing the engine parameters. So this will be um, in the cabin and the aircraft in the in the middle section and we're going to run it in um, in portrait mode so right now it's in landscape mode and you see if I disconnect the uh, the keyboard from it there it'll switch over into portrait mode and, and the great thing about the software is you can totally customize it to put whatever gauges you want wherever you want so you can just have a complete gauge cluster of what all the information that you want to see so um, you know obviously these are really small right now it isn't configured correctly but once we dial it all in and get it configured it's going to look really neat and you're going to have every bit of information you've ever wanted to have out of your engine um, completely available um, on the screen so that'll be good and i made it back to the shop just as everybody else was leaving and uh, surprised here to see jeff has got the nose nicely fitted on there he's got to make one little more adjustment but uh, it's fitting on there beautifully now you can actually see how flush it's sitting down there on the windshield so um, not long away from having that one ready to bond in and the guy's got this one done um, the mold done for this one at least the first set of layers so um, tomorrow they'll be probably putting the heavy layers on that and lastly um, this one is up on the machine I already ran the flat mill passes so I got the ball mill running and uh, that one will be finished uh, tomorrow so unfortunately uh, with the engine I have to go back and change one of the gaskets because we had a little bit of oil leak on one of the on the turbo stand there so that's going to be my project probably tomorrow or the next day uh, anyway, that's our update for the first half of this week, so thanks again for watching.